The entire team at M Salation want to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We want to recognise that we are recording and telling our stories on the stolen land of our country's first storytellers. We wish to pay our respects to all Wurundjeri elders and ancestors and to extend that respect to any First Nations peoples who listen to m We recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's continued connection to the land and waters of this country and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. Always was, always will be. M. Rossiano. Can I say slay? No. Yeah. Okay, slay. <laughs> and Marcella Rossiano Barrow. I feel like people oh, the wait till it gets don't silent cough. to cough. No, shut up. I don't care if you're going to die. And if you're going to cough, leave. leave. This is M. Salation. There needs to be some rules about what we are allowed to say. Things that are said at home, at home hours, when we are off the clock. Because you've said this publicly. You are in big danger if I start letting loose (laughs) shit you say at home. You're in insulation. Clack. I can't help but think that T-shirt was a strategic choice for today. (laughs) Are you feeling like Lisa Simpson of the situation right now? (laughs) No, my thought process was actually, oh, I don't have any Barbie merch. This is only pink top I own. <laughs> so, well, because I was like, I don't, I need some Oscar worthy. Oh. I had Pedro Pascal, but he didn't really. Oh, are you going to do a theme dress? Absolutely. It's the Oscars. Oh. What are you, what, well, you have so many niche novelty tops. Yeah. Just got an, I've just got like a simple frock on today. This is how I'm feeling. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> I'm feeling like a simple frock girl today. You're right. Well, good on you for carrying the tradition of theme dressing. I've let the team down. No, I'm... Mate, you've got your John Cena shoes on. I oh, do. Yes. <laughs> Have lesbians. My... Wait, no, I want to show my shoes though. Speaking of lesbians, <laughs> I've got some new some new gibbets. Courtesy Great. of mum. I have some I have some new Birkenstocks. Um, it's so funny, that meme. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Because I noticed both things. So I don't know what yeah, that same. says about me. Um, all right. Well, obviously... Oh, I can't get my shoe on now. Obviously, uh, Michael Lucas is not here this week because they've had to move boo. scheduling. Wow, you in Sarah danger. Boo? You in danger, girl. Bitch, I said what they said. <laughs> Chella's essentially auditioning today. This is your first. This is a hard one because, like... Michael obviously has very extensive knowledge of all things film and Oscars, and mm. I'd like to say I do too, but not to the same extent. Yeah, and also takes my abuse much better than you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but isn't it more entertaining? I, what they said. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I love you equally. <laughs> Except but I just twitched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, welcome to Emsolation. I forgot the name of the show then. Wow. <laughs> welcome to Emsolation. My name is M. Rossiano. I'm, I'm a writer. A <laughs> Come on. I thought you say singer first. No. Oh, sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shut I was going to try and do it. I was <laughs> with you. <laughs> okay, go redo. Well, you made a mistake. <laughs> I swear Oh, you no, but by all means. <laughs> You've copied my hair. You've copied my face. What? My hair's longer than yours. Oh, just semantics. What, an inch? Not that much longer, girl. You're the one growing your hair out, all right? I'm so you not. don't look like Pauline Hanson. So. Ah, uh, now. Ex- <laughs> there needs to be some rules about what we are allowed to say. Things that are said at home, at home hours, when we are off the clock. Because this, so you've said this publicly. You are in big danger if I start letting loose. <laughs> shit you say at home. So let's really draw a line right, in the right. sand. I'll do a reset. I'll do a reset. Or oh, do you not want to reset on that at all? I just feel like, <laughs> let me get the fucking introduction out. But by all means, please do it. I'll have my coffee. Go on, do the intro. Go on, do it. Little bitch. <laughs> no, I was no, going to say, it. do you want an explanation? Do it. Okay, great. Okay, go. Hi. The camera's there, dickhead. <laughs> My name's M. Rossiano. You wish. Welcome to... <laughs> nah, you already got it wrong. Wrong. Do you want me to do it or not? Do it correctly. It's not worth doing at all if you don't do it right. I'm a writer. My name's M. Rossiano, and I'm a writer, a singer, a stand-up comedian, a maximalist power queen, and together with my best friend Michael, since we're 11 years old, I bring you this podcast. Wrong. You forgot the fact that I'm autistic and ADHD. I'm autistic and ADHD. 
you are wrong. <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. And I don't talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just do it. Do you want oh, a Jesus shit. episode or not? Hello there and welcome to Emsolation. My name is Em Rossiano. I'm a writer, a singer, a stand-up comedian, a maximalist power queen, a neurodivergent magic brain. And together with the person I grew in my body, who's an ungrateful little sod, I bring you this podcast today as my trusty co-host, who's now my favourite again, had some scheduling issues with the television show he is about to finish filming, The Newsreader 3. Have you heard of it? Right. Now, what I want to say is... I really want to dye my hair fantastic red, right? Here we go. I really want to dye it red, but I have short hair normally, quite short, and when I was on Australian Idol, I had short red hair and Dicko referred to me as looking like Pauline Hanson on a night out at the bingo. (laughs) I was going for Princess Dye. (laughs) Apparently that's not where it landed. Um, Australian Idol uh, Instagram, what is it? What are they called? Idol memes or something? Yeah. They posted a photo of it if you'd like to see it. Anyway, I've been growing my hair to a length where I can safely dye it red without anybody making comparisons. I don't think I particularly look like Pauline Hanson. No. But maybe we have like similar, maybe nose or something. I don't think I don't, so. I think it's just the hairstyle. Think, yeah. yeah. So that's fine. Thank you so much for revealing the inside conversation that was so boring. But anyway, here we are. <laughs> In the sealed section today, Chella and I will be discussing the fact that she almost went to Pitch Festival. Yes. Cancelled on the day. We no, have no, no. Cancelled two days in. Two days, yes. Was still almost going to go. We're going to be talking. When all her friends went, though, and we've reported back. We're going to talk about Chella's lead up, why she cancelled, what's happened since. So if you're not a subscriber, you should become one. We had a bunch of you jump on last week. It is only $2 a week, and you do want to hear the story of Pitch Festival. It is going around all the media outlets. We have exclusive from the nerd who cancelled two days in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We'll get to the Oscars now. Look, by the time this airs, everyone will be sick of the Oscars, but we will just do a light massage of the things we enjoyed. Yes. And uh, we'll reference back to the start of this podcast 57 minutes ago (laughs) where we spoke about our shoes because I would say one of the highlights of the evening, Jimmy Kimmel hosted, of course. He did, uh, I would give him a solid B in hosting. It was it was inoffensive. It was fine. It, I found one part offensive. Oh uh, yeah. You, you've already read my notes, so you know you little bit. <laughs> but I had the same thought. I had the same thought. So Go at ahead. The start of the night, he's doing all the you know the gentle roasting of all the celebrities. This person's here from this film, and he went on for like five minutes about one of the male. I think it might have even been um, I want to say Cerulean, but that's not his name. <laughs> Oppenheimer. Blue, uh, blue eyes. Killian, Killian Murphy. I keep calling him Cerulean Murphy. No, he went on and on about Robert Downey Jr. Oh, that's right. He went on about Robert Downey Jr. for five minutes. Yeah. like Even you know, Robert was like, wrap it up. Now. Yeah, literally. Like, Downey, you've done the joke. Downey was like, let's move on. Yeah. And then he went to Emma Stone and said, oh, Emma is fantastic in poor things. She plays a woman who has the brain of a child. Um, Just like the woman who rebutted uh, the State of the Union last week, he was referring to, check my notes, he was referring to Senator Katie Britt who delivered the speech, the rebuttal to Joe Biden's State of the Union from her kitchen in a very concerning situation that even the evangelical right are saying, girl, (laughs) what is going... She didn't blink and she's very much a trad wife. And then that was kind of it. And we're all sitting here going, you just spent five minutes on Robert Downey Jr. And you've, what, said she was a good actor and said she played a woman with a child. And it wasn't just Robert. He he went to, like, five male, yeah. like, okay, I'm exaggerating, men, not five. But Doesn't a matter, bunch no one's going to fact check. A bunch of male, yeah. like, nominees, yeah. but didn't really yeah. give any other, apart from Emma, the time of day. And then Emma was later seen mouthing, he's a prick. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Which I... I I enjoy. I feel like that was that was a joke from her. That was that Whatever. was given comedy. She's great. She's so great. She's so great. She's so great. Now she did win Best Actress mm. for Poor Things, which is fantastic. But 
The people are not happy. Well, Lily Gladstone from Killers of the Flower Moon, I just want to let Lily know I respect her as an actor. I think she's incredible. But I'm never going to watch her film. In a million years, am I going to sit down and watch that Scorsese DiCaprio wank fest? It is not happening in this lifetime. (laughs) Mm -mm. But I I will sit down and watch 10 hours of television. Yes, of course. (laughs) But not a five-hour film. She's, of course... um, First Nations, American, Native American, Indian. What am, I feel like Indigenous to America. Mm-hmm. And um, first to be nominated, first female to be nominated in that award. Lost to Emma Stone. And the optics on that are, I don't know if you recall, but, and all the, by the by, Lily was won pretty much every award leading yeah. into the Oscars. She won the Golden Globe and the SAG. Yeah. And Emma Stone was cast in Aloha, if you'll recall, to play a Japanese um, lady. So in the book, in Aloha, the book, the doctor she was portraying. Oh, my God. I know this film with Bradley yeah, Cooper Bradley and Cooper. Rachel McAdams. Correct. Oh, my God. I know exactly what you're talking about. That lead was I couldn't meant, get through it because yeah. it was so bad. Yeah, that lead was meant to be Japanese-American oh, and they okay. made the casting choice to put Emma Stone in. Right. And then not long after, Scarlett Johansson was cast in the ghost. What's that? Oh, yeah. You know, ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell. Also, not a white lady role. Yeah. So the optics on this isn't great. Lily, I mean, Lily seemed, she was very gracious. Oh, yeah. In the moment. And so was Emma. And Emma was very gracious. Her Shared dress broke. it with all the nominees. Yeah. Her dress broke. Yeah. She was chaos, but in the best way. Yeah. So it's an interesting... No one, you know, having the same kind of outrage over the all the men, except for one woman in best directors category. Yeah, all yeah. The white guys there. Yeah. I wish we could put our outrage. Or when when they got up, like all the best um, actor or actors nominees. Oh yeah, it's a lot of white people. A lot of white people. Yes, like they would bring the past winners, and it was just they all said a kind word about yeah. the person up Which for the was, award. I quite enjoyed that. I did too. That was nice. Yeah, I feel like the first the ladies who went out first were a bit confused as to what was going on. Yep. But that's okay. We got there. Um, now we get to John Cena. Yes. King. It was, it was a great moment. What a, what a bit. He was there to present best costume Slay. and ended up standing there. I mean, what a rig. That body. Yeah. He worked hard for the money. He's 48. Yeah. And he actually does. So he, here, we'll insert the moment, have a look, and look, come gutters for days. Honestly. <laughs> It's stunning. We're looking at it here. We remember what it looks like. We're going to put it on this screen here, Tello, when everybody's watching. So if you can recall in your mind. Oh, there he is. Wow. Now, I noticed abs, cum gutters, Birkenstocks. Yes. <laughs> they were the, that was the order in which I noticed. Yeah, yeah. And Elevator. That's right. <laughs> uh, and I want to know who decided that it should be Birkenstocks. I feel like that was a him choice. Was he's a bit, also perfect. like wrestling in jorts. He's wearing Birkenstocks. He does. Wrestle dressed as a lesbian. Yeah. I just realised. Yeah. He does wrestle in jorts. So that was, I enjoyed that moment. I also enjoyed that the woman who won best costume then did not hug him. No, (laughs) no. no That was a personal choice. Even though he had popped on a nice toga. I would have hugged him. I would have rubbed myself up against that man. He also, we saw, unfortunately, behind the scenes that he had a little covering. He wasn't actually nude. What do you mean? Well, Do you have a dick sock? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but it was it was the colour of his skin. Yeah. Um, okay. But, yeah. That's but there's, they've got the footage of, like, it's like someone took footage from the actual Oscars, so when they cut away, I can't remember what we saw on the screen, but when they cut away and they're putting the toga on him, Jimmy's in front of him, but he's, like, kind of, it looks like he's in front of John Cena's bits. What are you saying? And he's waving his hands. Oh. People are like, what was Jimmy doing in that moment? I don't think anything interesting. Jimmy (laughs) just strikes me as very boring with questionable eyebrows. Yeah. That's all I feel. (laughs) Every time I look at him, I'm so distracted by his eyebrows. I can't picture them right now. Oh, well. You know me and my (laughs) eyebrow obsession. Uh, Also, obviously, a very powerful speech from Jonathan Glazer, who won for Best Foreign Film. Mm -hmm. He directed Zone of Interest. All our choices were made to reflect and confront us in the present, not to say, look what they did then, rather look what we do now. Our film shows where dehumanization leads at its worst. It shaped all of our past and present. Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. 
whether the victims of October the <laughs> whether the victims of October the seventh in Israel or the ongoing attack on Gaza, all are victims of this dehumanization. How do we resist? <laughs> Alexandra Bistron Kaladzievchek, the girl who glows in the film as she did in life, chose to. I dedicate this to her memory and her resistance. Thank you. Now, uh, people are calling him anti-Semitic. You have a Jewish man whose film has just won, and it is a film about the Holocaust. To call him anti-Semitic is wild and yes. a stretch. But he was the only winner to mention Palestine and Israel. Yeah, and he wouldn't have done that lightly at all. Like that is He such, was shaking. That could affect his whole career. It will. Yeah. It actually will. So um, it was interesting. There were a lot of uh, actors and actresses wearing the pins. Mark Ruffalo yep. um, on his way in. There's footage of him coming in, and he was like, "We were late because of the protests." Yeah. Um, and he's, he, uh, his wife kept trying to pull him away, but yeah, yeah, he was there. He was ready. So Al Pacino, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> senior moment. Okay, but mm. now he's come out. Mm. And said, well, for those of you who, who don't know, let's put it in. Films uh, were nominated, but only one will take the award for Best Picture. And uh, I have to go to the envelope for that. And I will. Here it comes. <laughs> and my eyes see Oppenheimer. Yes. Yes. Emma Thomas, Charles Okay. So essentially he forgot, he, well, we don't know about forgot, but he didn't list all the nominees for best film, which is always done. Every year it happens. Um, but he came out and he said that the producers told him not to because they had already all been credited throughout the night when they show their little trailers. So they, he was actually told not to list the nominees and just to announce oh. the best winner. But and the way he announced it was so unserious. Yeah. Yeah. Because also <laughs> the music usually comes straight in. Yeah. The music didn't come straight in well, because went, everyone was like, are you sure? Because he was like, uh, I think I'm seeing Oppenheimer. Yeah, like was he trying to do a bit or? No, I just think he's 83. I, I also just think it like was late. in a post La La Land moonlight wow. world, like let's not kid around about that. Well, let's let's talk about the last person to flub it was Faye Dunaway, who also is of an age, and perhaps we need to stop allowing people over the age of eighty to give out the best films. Yes, or put the category really earlier in the night, so it's not past their bedtime. Yes, or have someone up there supporting him. Yes. Oh no, Harrison Ford was up there with Faye Dunaway last time. He was of no help. Yeah. Well, no. that was the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, it, it was a great night. Do you have any other moments you'd like to mention? Obviously, I mean, I got, no, yeah. I do want to talk about I'm Just Ken. Oh, I can't believe I nearly moved yeah. on from yeah. it. I do want to talk about that. Yeah. We were sitting there. We were we were very happy because I was worried. We were worried it was just going to be a stand and sing with Mark Ronson on guitar. Mm. Um, but it did, he appeared in the audience with his cowboy hat and we knew it was on. Yeah. <laughs> my, my only notes are. Pink they, Gucci suit, amazing. Pink Gucci suit sleigh, 65 Kens sleigh, sleigh. And they had all the original Kens there. Amazing. Can I say sleigh? No. Yeah. Okay, sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a serve. They had slash there. Um, but. You, don't, you only know who slash is because of me. And? Do you even, you, do, we wouldn't have had a clue otherwise, would you? No, because of the hat. But you know what band he's from? Guns N' Roses. Good girl, good yes. girl, good girl. <laughs> yeah. But there's a moment where they they bring out like all the Barbie heads. Can I just stop you there? Okay, go. I don't know why we had empty champagne glasses. Yeah, what was that? Well, it was meant to be. I feel like it was because he because he glassed they himself. himself. But it and felt they threw the... it felt strange, and I was worried about them breaking. And I didn't understand how they were going to clear them off. Also, and it's on. not like Ken sipped champagne Never. in the film at all. Like yeah. it should have been a reference. I think it should have been a beer bottle or something. Or a beach ball, like or a, a beer a bottle. Or... Yeah, I felt strange about the champagne glasses. It took me out of the moment. And yeah. it, it was in a lot of Corey at the start. It wasn't yes. just a stab moment. Yeah, it was there strange. Was a lot of. Mm, 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 um, mm. 
No, they cover the camera with the Barbie face and they covered it for a while. We thought we were getting a costume change. And it change. totally was like we're getting a yeah. re- reveal because then they're, they're all going to the camera, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And then he appears again and he's in the same suit. Yeah. And I just feel like Gucci could have made like a tearaway Magic Mike style suit. Like I just feel a like Ryan... Abs out. He didn't want him out. Yeah, but we could, they, again, contour, carve, like Emily Blunt said... They were fake. They were good. <laughs> they were great. Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling together. I think Ryan really slides into Ken off and on like method. Absolutely. He watched the light flick in his head and all of a sudden he's Ken being a bit bitchy, <laughs> yeah. a bit, bit petty. No, I love the performance. I, and he, he sung live. and He, he can sing her. Well, well no, oh. no, 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 no. Oh. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. Although Wait, what's the t- level below that? Singer, we decided. Singer? Vocalist. No, no, no. Vocalist is... No... No, the level we have to. No, we can't. We cannot release that information until we've officially figured that out. All right, all right, right, no, no. But he's a singer. He did well. Vocalist. Yeah, don't say singer. All right, he's a vocalist. He sang. He did well. Mm, I don't think he sang. He can. No, he's a vocalist. Make sounds that are in tune. <laughs> I think that's. Did we? Uh, he had a bit of vibrato though. Yeah, no, and he did some runs. It was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And to do it live, live. from sitting in the audience. And not cracking up when you've got Billy and Margot and Greta losing yeah. it around you. Yeah. I thought Billie Eilish performed beautifully. Yeah, yep. Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo. I live. I live. She Ariana won me over. What do you mean? She's so good. No, no, I I Her know. I just wait, never... wait. Okay. She slayed <laughs> on <laughs> SNL. Slayed. Yes, yes. That so won me good. over. And then I saw her on the carpet and she was talking to Vanessa Hudgens. Mm. Who's um, pregnant? Who's pregnant? Oh my god! And her husband Troy. is so cute. <laughs> uh, no, everyone's like Austin Butler and Zac Efron. Your loss. Uh-huh. And they were posting hot photos of her in the mesh black. I forgot black thing. God, she dated Austin Butler for so long. They were together for so long, and then he did. Then he dumped her for Cindy Crawford's yeah. daughter. Who we and like. he's not with her now. He's with someone else. No, he's still with Carla Gerber. No, sorry, someone what? Look it up. Ben, look it up, please. <laughs> no, Aust- no, they're still no. together. No. Incorrect. He's with a different girl no, now. No, he's still with Carla Gerber. Cara, Ger- whatever her name is. Cindy Crawford's daughter. Oh, fine. He, they're still together. I swear they broke up. No, up. you're wrong. And I'm right. And we should get that on a button. Okay, well, no, no one's saying. Mum's right, mum's right. Of course I'm right. I swear they broke up. Well, you're wrong. They're not pictured together. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Ariana was fantastic. Oh, wait, no, but I saw her on the carpet yes. with Vanessa and then she was like mid-sentence and then she spotted Michelle Yeoh and she like lost her mind mm. and it was the cutest thing ever. She like gave Michelle four hugs in a row mm. and I don't know. It was you need really to reset cute. why seeing Michelle Yeoh oh, is exciting. Because she's playing, oh, my God, what's the character's name? Madam... Mag- Magalu, Magalu, Ma- we've only seen Wicked seven <laughs> times. She is Magalu's playing the Madam- headmistress in Wicked. Madam Magalu. Madam yeah, Marble. Look it up. Madam Marble, that's it. Okay. Yes. We got that. Speaking of. As you all know, Wicked is my emotional support musical. <laughs> and I've been needing some emotional support, so... It has opened in Melbourne for yep. the 97th time. Yeah. And I was trying to figure out how many times I've seen it. And I think, did we land on six? Yeah, you've, yeah you're on six. I think I'm, I'm on four. Yes, yep. yes. Because I did see it on Broadway. Yes. My first time being in New York. And as the famous story goes, I've told it once, not famous. <laughs> I got mugged and I had just enough money left to go see... Wicked by myself until mum and dad had wired me cash. <laughs> Stunning. So that's what I did. So we went along to see it. And um, the night before, though, we'd gone to see a drag show. Yes. And it was because an early. Because when you can't go to a music festival with your friends, you go to a drag show with mummy. <laughs> okay, so hold that for sealed section. People have to pay to hear that information. <laughs> But, yes, that's what we did. We went to see a drag show. Can you, before we get back to Wicked, can you tell everybody what happened at the drag show? <gasps> oh, my God, I forgot. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we go to a drag show in Fitzroy. It was great. It was vibes. It was really, there's was um, lots of lovely lesbians. Let's yeah. go lesbians. Let's go lesbians. Um and it was a lesbian. It was a lesbian couple were getting married, married, and they had a huge hens night. Yeah, and they had full of lesbians yeah. and two straight men. Yeah, so it literally was us and a huge lesbian hens night, mm-hmm. basically, which is dreams. That's what <laughs> dreams are made of. 
Um, and two stunning performers. I forgot their names, but... Oh, wow. This is what happened when you put neuro- <laughs> two neurodivergent people together. It was... I'll put it all on the socials No, we need stories. to give them a shout-out. Oh, Get it up. Me. Get it up. Oh, something it was Hansy, Settle. Hans. Sentel Se- Gemini. Sentel. Sentel Sent- Storm. Yeah. Sent- Sent Storm and Handful Hansy. No, Hans- <laughs> it was like Jemima. Jemima Handful. Jemima Handful? I think Can I'm there. Can you put the music on? I think I'm there. <laughs> Jemima Handful and Sen- uh, Sendal Frost. The Storm. Uh, Sindel Storm yes. was the pretty Ariana. They were both pretty. Well, I've only said one, haven't I? I haven't described <laughs> Jemima yet. All you need to know is Sindel did an Ariana show. And Jemima did a Ben Midler show. <laughs> and it was stunning. And it was amazing. It was giving, I can't remember Jemima's name. Wait. Jemima Handful. Oh, if you're willing to bet your life on it, then I can stop looking. I'm not betting my life on the name of a drag queen, but I think I'm close. Wow. Okay. Priorities. <laughs> it was great. It was drag cabaret in Fitzroy. It starts at 7.30. It ticked all of our boxes, basically. Yep. And then um, there was a crowd participation portion. Crowd Oh, my God. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And so, we should point out the drag queens were obsessed with Odette. Yes, they they Completely. commented on her lovely bosoms. Yeah, Odie has a bosom. Yeah, not they, bosoms. Odie has a bosom, and they commented. Yeah, um, good for her. And she has like milky white. Bosoms. I feel like I'm really trying not to dwell on that discussion. So if you, we could just move on. You're right. It is not appropriate to discuss another woman's bosoms. Yes, we were just we were just acknowledging her. her move on. We're just doing a drive by, right? Bridgeton. We're not stopping here. You can we're not stopping. You need to say it live because we got rid of the button. Move on. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> but all I'm saying is she could be okay, no, no. All I'm saying in is... Bridgerton and she could would fit right in there. Right, okay, great. <laughs> okay. Thank Just you. Just classic beauty. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So she gets up and they have to do some Cory. Yeah. Stunning. To dancing queen. To dancing queen. So the three contestants that got up on stage were uh, do you want me to describe them? No, just just say. Oh, my God, your storytelling is shit. Well, you keep interrupting every 10 seconds. I'll set the scene. Yeah, but I don't know how much detail. All right, fine. There was a lady who was in a black mesh dress. And she was she there was, on a hen's night also. She was there on a hen's night. She was quite a good dancer. Yep. Okay. And then there's Odie in the middle. And then there's a very handsome man. Straight man. I was just about to say, we spent the whole night trying to decide if he was gay or straight, gay or straight, gay or straight. Then we, then we met his wife. Oh, did we? Yeah, the blonde. Yeah, they shed her arm around him. She had a wedding ring on. But he had like no socks doesn't and matter. like really tight shorts. Metrosexual. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not to assume. No, doesn't matter. I would never do that. Let's not label people. Um. Anyway. I do. <laughs> so they're no, I'm distracted. Yeah. Um, then then Odie uh, gets called into the centre for a little spotlight. Mm-hmm. She, she gives, she serves. She falls over. She hits the deck. <laughs> it's the greatest moment of my life. Who does a death drop in Birkenstock? <laughs> Oh, we're back to Birkenstocks again. <laughs> she tried to do a death drop in a long denim skirt and Birkenstocks. I mean, may I have the confidence of a person who thinks that they can death drop in a tight denim skirt and Birkenstocks? Hey, points for trying, totally. all right? She gave. And then yeah. <laughs> the dancing wraps up and the lady in the black mesh dress, she's standing there and the woman who she's with who's getting married yells out, ask her how we met. Yeah. Twice, though, because it was ignored yeah, by the drag queen. Because we don't care. Did we ask? No. No, no but no. they really wanted us to know. And ask it's... her how we met. And it didn't even relate to what was going on no. at all. No, it, was it was out of nowhere. They really wanted the room to understand their relationship. And the lady up there was like, oh, no, no, no. And, and so then the she bride. listened to that instinct. Yeah. So then the bride yells out. I don't want to get this wrong. You do it. <laughs> the bride yells out. Uh Wait. Wait, no, no, <laughs> no, no, wait. no. Wait, wait. Wait, pause. Oh, fu- no, no, no. Oh, fuck, dude. Um, I was married. Oh, I was, I, she, she was married, married to my brother, brother and I fucked her in the toilet. <laughs> yes. And then, and then she fucked my baby daddy. Yes. <laughs> there we go. No, that was a separate woman. So, no. yeah, no, it, what? no, no, no. There were two women on the table. And oh, then a oh my third God, I woman. It was the bride. No, you missed it. So the, <laughs> so the bride yells out, she was married to my brother and I fucked her in the toilets. Yeah. And then a second woman says, she also fucked my baby daddy. And then a third woman yelled out, we live in a small town. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> I mean. And everyone in the room just went, 
Well, everyone in the room went, these fucking heteros. <laughs> like, <laughs> you No, 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 they're not, though. No, they. Well, she was marrying a man. Yeah, but she fucked the woman. Yeah, but they were behaving like heterosexual <laughs> behaviors. No, they were behaving like queers. No, <laughs> no. Who Incorrect. all have sex with each other, but they're all friends and marry. No, the way they were behaving on Saturday night. Oh, it was, was an annoying very... straight lady at a drag show. Thank you. Right, okay. Very annoying heteros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was our experience at the drag <laughs> But Was that a kid. side quest? It was a double. So we went along to see Wicked. Oh. I knew where that was going. <laughs> and we went and um, we got ourselves a Galinda cocktail. Yeah, which was delicious. Quite thank nice. you, Mariner Group. Yes. They, wow. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Mariner Group. I didn't even know it was them. And we went and we took our seats and we were right sitting in the middle of the aisle, in the middle of the theatre. So we were trapped for the whole show. There was to be yeah, no getting which up. which I don't like that. Me I always either. put myself on the end so that I can sprint to the toilet at yeah. intermission. So obviously the show begins. I'm totally transfixed. I'm there. I'm taken. I'm looking at the dragon. I'm living. I'm loving. I'm just like so emotional because this musical means way more to me than it should. And then <laughs> you hear a fucking, this fucking woman. Yeah, yeah, ASMR. It was like she was opening a package. It was like. like past the parcel. It was like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, she took on a bag of chips for what felt like the entire yes. first act. Yes. And I was ready to throw down. And also the amount of coughing. I feel like people oh, wait till it gets don't silent cough. to cough. No, shut up. I don't care if you're going to And if you're going to cough, leave. <laughs> Can I tell you about my, you, you know why I'm scarred with coughing. Yes. My mother coughs like a 16th century tuberculosis victim. <laughs> I need you to understand, my mother doesn't... <laughs> My mother takes a run up and it sounds like she's got four lungs full of fluid and like there's a foghorn and a duck wrestling. It is horrendous. Yes. And she would seem to wait until I had a dancing concert or a school assembly yeah. to start up the cough. Yeah. And the anxiety I would feel when she would begin, because I knew the pattern, I knew there would be three big coughs, then we would get about a 30 second break followed by eight and then a huge sneeze. Yes. And rinse and repeat six or seven times throughout yes. the night. Yeah. Especially if it was like in the spring. Yeah. And so any cough sets me off. Yeah, but I'm also like, where there's courtesy, right? The same when you're in a cinema. Don't open your phone and anything. Open it Don't before eat. the movie starts. Don't eat. Or if there's an action sequence, you wait for that. Wait till Defying Gravity to get to oh hack your guts up. Oh my God. There was one very cute interruption though. <gasps> oh. During uh, <laughs> during for good, a guide dog was in there and um he started started whimpering. Yeah. He was like oh. crying. He's like I, was, I heard it said some people oh, during for good. I know, good. yeah, it I was, was okay beautiful. with that. that I was, was fine. That was on brand. That. Yeah. So, but I just want to say, if you're going to to the musical theatre, don't breathe, don't cough, <laughs> don't get food that will make a noise, don't do anything. Yeah. That will distract me from my experience. Yeah. I was really annoyed. Yeah. And then I said to Chella, I only usually go on opening nights. I don't have this riffraff around me. No, no. <laughs> well, no, you said. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Tell the truth. Tell you what said. I said. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Tell I, the, no, you said I'm not used to being here with people who look like they're just going to Westfield. Well. <laughs> Bitch. I said it was a 35-degree Sunday afternoon. I'm sorry. If you were Even going, we were dressed down a little how bit. How dare you? I was in a stunning flower-fronted frock. Yes, but we... Do you know what we didn't... Th we didn't theme dress, which was... Hang on. First of all, I just want to say, if you are going to the theatre... Yeah. And there are people on stage, don't you come dressed as though you've just done the shopping at Coles. I don't care how hot it is. Yeah. You put the effort in. Yeah. And I was surrounded by people in plaid and singlets <laughs> and, like, they're not good Birkenstocks. And I was just, the woman next to me took her shoes off. Like, I was oh, God, there's no respect. There's no respect. So I did say, like, a total wanker. And I did know that I was being a wanker. I usually only go on opening nights. So this is a shock to my system. <laughs> is this what the theatre says? Is this what the performers have to look out on most nights? <laughs> also, I want to point out, I'm only used to my audiences. 
And how do they come? Tizzed yes. up, dressed, yes. in theme, leopard yeah. print, sparkles, merch t-shirts. My audience put in effort. So when I have to sit with the G-pub that aren't Emraciano audiences um, or opening night audiences, I don't know how it's people do it. Oh, it's really disgusting. Oh, get them out of my eye set. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> eye set? Oh, sure. Eye set. Sure. So the Wicked cast are brilliant. Yeah. And because we didn't, we went Singers. and saw it in Sydney, but we had swings who were still equally brilliant, but... It was nice to see Sheridan sing Defying Gravity. And also interesting that the girl who plays Glinda, her sister is the swing. Yeah. So we've... How? <laughs> I just really want to know what the dynamics are. Mm, like, I can tell you. Like, I just really <laughs> want to know. <laughs> oh, She'd be like, oh, is that a cough? Or do you, you don't want to go on tonight? I want to see oh, sick. the behind the scenes story <laughs> of the sisters where one is she cast as Glinda. Down the stairs. Oops. And the other is the understudy. <laughs> that would be a great oh show. Oh, my, I'd watch the shit out Excellent. of that. And imagine being their mum. I mean, it would be so hard for me to be impartial. Yeah. I'd be so hard not to play yeah. favourites. Yeah. <laughs> you were better on Tuesday, but you were better on Thursday. Imagine. Yeah. I just want to know, and we'll never know, they'll always trot out that, I'm just happy for my sister. Yeah, yeah. But we've seen both sisters, and I, they were just as good as each other. I agree. And they're very good. Their comic timing. Yeah. The, I laugh the most at Glinda. And we have seen this show. We know what's coming. Mm, mm. <laughs> this is this is Chella's Gilmore Girls of Musicals. Yeah. I feel like she went harder than I'm used to. Like even Kristen mm. Chenoweth never went that hard. No. She was with great. With the comic. Yeah. She's I, still great. But I highly recommend you go and see it. But don't go see it if you don't like musicals. This isn't a musical to take a chance on because you're thinking of trying. No. Mm, mm, what would you say? No, no, no. But I'm saying I feel like everyone's like. Apart Book of Mormon Hamilton, Hamilton. Apart from those. That's it. People are like if you want to see a classic musical. No. We could see Wicked. No. That'll ruin. It's too long. What's, what would you recommend apart from Hamilton and Book of Mormon? Well, they're my recommendations. Why can't I recommend them? No, but I mean like a, a, like a classic. No, none of the classics. It'll have to be a newly. Cats. Six. <laughs> Six is quick, oh, yeah. 70 minutes. Everyone gets a solo. Great, catchy music and yeah, you're yeah. out. No interval. Rocky Horror? Yeah, Rocky Horror's on at the moment. Joel or Creasy as the narrator. Shop of Horrors. Is they're quite... all pretty classic musicals, yeah. to be fair. I just think, I think Wicked's fine. I saw someone was taking their four-year-old. That's oh. a choice. <laughs> to Wicked? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's an MC later. I hope she's, I wish her well, but I'll tell you, that's a choice. That's a long show it's and a, a lot of dialogue. Show, yeah. Um, no, I think if, if you like, if you like Campery, if you love The Wizard of Oz, if you don't mind a musical, then go see Wicked. Yeah. But if you're somebody who's like, oh, I don't really like Wicked. I don't really like musicals. Oh, they're singing again. Yeah. Every every character oh, gets a song, dude. right? It's one of those musicals. There's, every <laughs> character gets a song. If someone has a thought, they get a, a song. song. It's just no. Which is why I love musicals. Exactly. So, so no, I highly recommend you all go and see it. It's fantastic. I, I loved it and we'll probably go and see it before it leaves. Absolutely. <laughs> it closes at the end of April. I've already looked at availability. It's so beautiful. I bought myself some merch, got myself a top. Chella got a snow globe. Yeah. That Elio. That I'm already fighting with Elio over. Elio cried. Yeah. Because you. his snow globe with a dinosaur doesn't make music. So and you should have thought about that when you bought it. Mine <laughs> does. Mine sings as long as you're mine. And it's beautiful and there's green glitter and Elio's doesn't sing. Did you see his face? When I did. The- and it was genuine tears. It wasn't even crocodile tears. It no. was genuine upset. So Chella brings out her music, a globe. And-, and I thought, we were like, let's show Elio. It'll be great. He'll love it. And he and wanted it. Chella, show Elio. I was like, show, sure, great idea. He even no. said to me it was a mistake showing me Chella's globe. <laughs> Because now it's all I can think about. So I quickly managed to manifest. I found a globe. Yeah. I found and it lit one. up and it had glitter and a dinosaur, but, but it didn't sick. sing. And he looked at me and he said, are you saying that mine does not make music? <laughs> and then he burst into tears. It was the most wholesome, ridiculous. So today, I had to walk away because I was laughing. I, I am like, the I asshole. I at this child. I am the asshole parent. Yes. Because my child's... <laughs> Snow globe doesn't sing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, because I told him, he was like, do you listen to it when you go to sleep? Oh, and no. I said, no, I'm not that sort of person. I need dead silence when I sleep. And he was like, well, I need music. He was like, well, then why did you get a snow globe that makes music if you're not going to listen to it when you sleep? I should have it, Chella. I should have it. I should have it. Yeah. He's so funny. Well, that's, you know, that's the autism. You set a rule down. He's going to follow it. Yeah. These people still haven't figured it out. They say one thing and it is like a commandment in stone in blood. Yeah. So go and see Wicked if you're into musicals. That's our review. Thank you, Mariner Group. Are you sure that's who's doing it? Yeah, because all my mates work for them. For having us and for getting us the tickets. How long have we been going, Benjamin? 36 minutes. Well, it's probably time now to move on to the sealed section. Uh-huh. Um, 
Thank you for joining us this week, M Slaters. Michael will be back as usual next week. I um, am off to Sydney today. I've got a busy couple of weeks. Off to get a little speech. I'm seeing the original Fiero tonight. Oh, I was like, who? Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Mills. Fair original. Enough. Yeah, the best Fiero. The best oh, one. Of, oh, the best. He is. <laughs> if you went to the Emsolation podcast live. <laughs> Stella and I are now moving to the Seals section because over the weekend the Pitch Music Festival happened <laughs> and Chella had tickets to go and spent the week packing like she was preparing to scale fucking Everest. <laughs> you have never seen such preparation for a music festival. I don't think, like, I don't think when people go away to war. <laughs> I did feel like I was going uh, to war. Save it, save it, save it. Because my daughter was forcing herself to go along. Save it, Em. Save it. So if you want to subscribe to Emsolation Extra, please do. It's two bucks a week and we're totally worth it. And that's what funds this entire operation because we don't have ads. So please subscribe. Uh, Catch you next week. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, let's go. Right, so Pitch Music Festival. To enjoy today's sealed section of Emsolation, upgrade your experience and join the extra family with our premium service, Emsolation Extra. You get two bonus episodes direct to your favourite podcast app every week in an exclusive feed, as well as an Ask Me Anything where Em and Michael answer your questions. There's over 70 other episodes awaiting you already, plus you'll also get Instagram close friends access, ticket pre-sales, merch discounts and heaps more. Help Em keep this independent neurodivergent business alive by supporting us for less than $2 a week on our yearly plan or less than $2.50 a week on our monthly plan. Just sign up at emsolation.supercast.com now. Emsolation is recorded at Down the Hill Studios, hosted by M. Rossiano with Michael Lucas. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley, produced by M. Rossiano. Edited by Ezekiel Fenn and videos by James Henderson. Socials by Benjamin Wesley, M. Rossiano and Marcella Rossiano Barrow with assistance from Jem Evans and Isabella Hines. Follow us on Instagram at Emsolation Podcast where you'll find a link in our bio so you can sign up for our weekly newsletter, join other Emsolators at the Emsolation Group on Facebook, follow our YouTube and TikTok channels and so much more. Help us out by sharing Emsolation with your friends, give us a five-star rating, and make sure you're following us by hitting the follow button on your favourite podcast app. Thanks for listening and or watching this week's episode, and we can't wait to chat with you again soon. And action. Hello, Emsolation Extra Pals. Well, you've dived... You know what? I was listening to us last week. So great. You listen to the regular app and inside the app it just rolls straight into extra. Stunning. Don't even have to click a button. No. So it's just worthwhile. If you're here, well done for paying. Thank you. Keeps me going. Trust me. Thank you for feeding me. It Pretty much. That's not even a joke. <laughs> and me. And you <laughs> and everyone else. Um, so we, we've promised it. We've teased it. Can you pitch music festival? Just <laughs> give background. Pitch on, it to me. Give it. Give. Good. Mm. Give background on pitch. Pitch. Is a four-day techno musical in Melbourne. And when I think tech, <laughs> when I think techno music, I definitely think, think of the Chella. Broadway loving, <laughs> Beyonce singing, <laughs> Cella. For sure. I mean, what yeah. a t- tech rat. I mean, yeah. if I said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Yeah. Cella, tech rat, Rossiano Barrett. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so. Why? Let's start with why. I just felt like... <laughs> 